Hello, my name is Bart van der Heide. I'm the director of Museion. I'm here with Elena Bini, head of collections, and Andreas Hapkemeyer, head of research. Together, we'll uh, give you a short introduction of our new exhibition, Here to Stay. Similar to many of our colleagues in the field, also Museum cannot ignore the constraints imposed by the ongoing pandemic. Nevertheless, we here at Museum have been working hard on a major part of our core business, which is, of course, the collection. The exhibition Here to Stay features exclusively new donations, long-term loans, and promised gifts. On the one hand, it's a generation of artists that were active in the first decades of this century, and on the other hand, uh, a collection of conceptual artists who were active in the second half of the last century. For these artists, making a finished work of art was not necessarily the end product. For them, it was much more important to expose the, the influences that shape the way we experience, but also judge art, Here we are in the introductory space of the exhibition and we already immediately encounter four major works within this exhibition. From four artists, uh, Roman Ondak, uh, Sean Snyder, Jimmy Durham. And uh, through the window we see this magnificent installation by uh, Natasha Sader Hagiyan. This is a work by Roman Ondak called Plak, Virtual Museum for Contemporary Art. And as you can see, it uh, basically spells it out for us. The artist is known to be drawn to the overlooked aspects of the art context, the art world, in order to expose it through its operative mechanics. A very strong work, in my opinion, which also leads uh, to the next work, because this work is actually called Exhibition and it's by Sean Snyder. So what these works tell us together is that no institutional context is neutral. We might experience artworks in a museum, in white, white spaces, completely isolated, so we can experience these works uninterfered. However, there are many influences that still um, shape our experience. A great example of that practice is, of course, in the work of uh, Jimmy Durham. And we have here a fantastic uh, sculpture by him called Ghost and a Machine. We see a copy of uh, Pallas Athena, the goddess of knowledge, technology, and warfare. She is placed together with an old fridge which takes the shape of a plinth. But for this occasion, um, the, the goddess is not placed on top of the plinth, but is actually bound together as convicts. It becomes like a yana space, a face with a front and a back, because you see a beautiful repetition of the knot of the, um, uh, the garment of uh, Pallas Athena and the knot on the back uh, of the fridge. And uh, so it's very much uh, um, like questioning uh, who controls knowledge, uh, who defines knowledge. So the next room is actually our previous library. And um, I think, you know, for the works that uh, I want to introduce to you now. This is actually quite a significant element for me uh, because, you know, uh, the library is not anymore in this building. It went to the university. And um, so what you see here is basically um, a, a monument without uh, its voice. And uh, that is exactly also a theme that is central to this work by uh, David Malikovic, retired form. His interest was very much about what is the fate 
of monuments that lost their significance due to changes in history. These are monuments that are made for the commemoration of the fallen soldiers in the Second World War, but that have been in the 90s very much demolished and uh, became the target for uh, vandalism. These are monuments that are deprived of their political, propagandistic significance. And how can they become new you know, surfaces uh, to, to project on? In the same room, we have Prachaya Pintong, a work that is called Dusty Relief B minus Mu. The work is placed at, at a location uh, that is you know, easily like, overlooked, placed on its own packaging material. Um, so it looks as if it is ready to be hung or um, going to, ready to go to storage or maybe even ready to be discarded. The fact that the surface is punctuated violently might already suggest a direction to an answer to that question. With this act, the artist, of course, exposes the rapid obsolescence of these types of architecture. So this installation is by the artist uh, Natasha Sadir Hagigian and she is known to really question the role of the artist within the institutional setting and of course its aura of authenticity that is very much connected to it. She is therefore working a lot with aliases. So uh, this Robbie Williams is one of these aliases uh, and collaborations. So, and what is also very beautiful is that on the back of this curtain, you see all the names of everyone who was involved in realizing this work. In the first room, you hear a galloping horse. And in the second room, you see a continuation of that narrative in this parkour of uh, obstacles. So it very much uh, represents the, this artistic practice as something quite coded, um, controlled, and maybe uh, even within the institutional field, uh, superfluous. Every time this installation needs to be re, um, uh, reinstalled, the list needs to be added with new names of the people who were involved. So in that sense, the, there is always an open end that is actually a great also link to a more historical position of Franco Vaccari, in which his work is actually also never finished. Ci troviamo nella parte della mostra dedicata a un artista italiano che è Franco Vaccari. Vaccari nasce a Modena nel 1936, dove tuttora lavora, dove tuttora vive. Eh, nella sua produzione artistica utilizza una molteplicità di media eh, molto differenziati tra di loro che vanno dalla fotografia che è un mezzo che lui utilizza molto spesso e a lui molto caro fino al video, dal film alle azioni partecipative fino ad un'intensa attività eh, teorico e critica. In queste opere lui avviava un processo creando un allestimento e poi era il pubblico nel corso dell'esposizione che lo portava avanti. A fine esposizione l'artista ricalcolava un po' il tutto e eh, creava un'opera a parte, come in questo caso, in questo dittico, dove durante la Biennale, nel Padiglione Italia, l'artista aveva posto al centro una macchina fotomatic, quelle classiche macchine eh, fotografiche che si trovano nelle stazioni o nei luoghi pubblici, e aveva scritto sul muro una frase dove invitava i visitatori e le visitatrici a lasciare una traccia del loro passaggio. Un altro esempio presente in mostra di esposizione in tempo reale è questo, questo nucleo di opere proveniente dall'archivio di nuova scrittura e, ed è l'esposizione in tempo reale numero 21 del 1993, sempre esposta alla Biennale di Venezia. Eh, Vaccari cosa aveva pensato di realizzare? All'interno della, della Biennale, in una sezione un po' di passaggio, aveva creato una stanza 
un luogo di riposo, un luogo di relax, un vero e proprio bar funzionante, aveva dato anche un titolo a questo bar, ovvero Bar Code, Code Bar, all'interno dei tavolini, delle abajur, una luce soffusa, dei distributori automatici di bevande, eh, ma tutta questa eh, zona un po' di, di relax era, eh, poi invitava i visitatori a riflettere su un caso politico in realtà molto impegnativo per il periodo, che era il caso appunto dell'attivista italiana Silvia Baraldini, che era condannata negli Stati Uniti eh, nel 1983. Una scritta multilingue sotto l'immagine della Baraldini eh, faceva riflettere non solo sul caso politico ma anche sui meccanismi del mondo dell'arte. Das Werk von Bertis Kuba hat einige besondere Merkmale. Das erste Merkmal ist, dass es, äh, dass es immer ansetzt bei all, ganz alltäglichen Dingen. Weiters ist es gekennzeichnet von langen Prozessen, die oft über Jahre hinweg laufen und von äh, der Kooperation mit anderen Leuten und vom Austausch mit anderen Leuten. Und das, da haben wir ein sehr schönes Beispiel hier vor uns liegen. Und zwar sind das äh, Briefe, Blätter, die sich Bertis Huber mit Ray Johnson ausgetauscht hat. Ray Johnson war ein Amerikaner, hat in New York gelebt und gilt als der ja, Begründer, Erfinder der sogenannten Mail Art. Er hat ähm, Werke geschickt an Leute, in dem Fall an Bertis Huber, und sie hat äh, etwas auf diese Werke gezeichnet. Man sieht das zum Beispiel da. Und ähm, ein weiteres Beispiel ist dieser Briefwechsel, den wir hier sehen. Das sind 250 von über 500 Briefen, die Bertis Huber im Lauf von 30 Jahren einem Freund geschickt hat, dem Neurologen ähm, Wolf Becker-Glauch. Äh, sie hat ihm geschrieben und er hat immer wieder mal geantwortet. Und diese über 500 Briefe hat sie nach dem Tod des Adressaten von der Familie zurückgehalten und über Paolo della Grazia, den, den Sammler von Archivio di Nuova Scrittura, haben wir dann diese Werke ins Museum bekommen. Das Prinzip des Austausches geht auch bei den Werken bei dieser Serie weiter. Sie nennen, wir nennen sie die Labels, weil sie aus Kleideretiketten bestehen. Das Werk heißt Under Penalty of Law, ist eigentlich 70-teilig. Das Museum hat zwölf davon erworben im Laufe der Zeit. Wir haben gesagt, der Austausch äh, erfolgte in diesen ganzen Fällen über, über, über die Post und äh, dabei ist das Thema der Briefmarke aufgetaucht. aufgetaucht. Ähm, Bertis Gruber hat eben äh, Briefmarken aus aller Welt bekommen und hat dann begonnen, äh, hat gesehen, dass sehr viele Briefmarken wichtigen Frauen ähm, gewidmet sind. Und, ähm, kommt sozusagen äh, nach, mit diesen 42 kleinen äh, Bildern zu, sozusagen zu, einem, ähm, ja, zu einem feministischen Statement. Und vielleicht versteht man jetzt, wie bei Bertis Huber eigentlich äh, ein Ding in das andere übergeht und wie letztlich alles miteinander verbunden ist. We place these more historical focus presentations on Vacari, Scuber, bang in the middle of all these like amazing photographs, media installations and sculptures of artists that produced uh, the works between 2000 and 2010. The reason for that is that we really see uh, a common interest between these two generations and um, hence we've decided to really Uh, introduce important themes for the younger generation of artists through the works of an older generation of artists. The work from A Legacy of Neglect by Ryan Gender was originally part of a large, much larger group of works that he made for a pavilion of Le Corbusier, which is now in Bologna. For this project, the artist completely turned this pavilion into a time capsule 
And what we see here is part of it. This particular work from a legacy of neglect contract is basically exactly what it is. It is a contract. It's not a work of art because a work of art can only be realized 50 years after the opening of the original project. So as the project was made, opened in 2006, the work can only be shown in 2056. Here we see the contract that secures that act, that allows um, uh, access to the vault uh, of a, a bank in Bologna that um, has the instructions for the artwork. On the um, slideshow, we only see registration, a document of the act of signing the contract at the notary. So, Hand by Sven Saxhalber is also another example of an artwork which can only be made finished in collaboration. So, here we see a giant jigsaw puzzle of um, The Birth of Adam by Michelangelo. It's a work that he made together with his father in New York on the occasion of Performa. It's a um, festival for performance art. As you see, it's unfinished. It basically shows the end result of the time they spent together making this puzzle. Hier befinden wir uns im Bereich der Poesia Visiva. Poesia Visiva ist eine italienische Strömung, die Anfang der 60er Jahre entsteht und sich ausschließlich mit Medienbildern beschäftigt. Man kann sie, sagen wir, im Umfeld der Popart ansiedeln, nur im Unterschied zu dieser ist die Poesia Visiva sehr äh, gesellschaftskritisch. Wie lange dieser Impuls anhält, kann man bei Nanni Balestrinis Werk Tristanol sehen, ein Film, der 2012 auf der Documenta vorgestellt wurde und der ausschließlich Fernsehbildern besteht, die auf digitalem Weg immer neu gemischt werden. Da kann man sozusagen die Aktualität sehen. Woher das aber kommt, ist, sehen wir hier besser, und zwar Zeitungsausschnitte, die Bilder und Texte kombinieren. Und äh, das Material stammt aus den Massenmedien, soll aber in dieser neuen Kombination die Massenmedien und die dahinterstehende Gesellschaftsform kritisieren. Was noch interessant ist, ist, dass eine zweite Generation von Künstlern dann ähm, das sozusagen explizit macht. Es, wir haben hier die Blätter von Lotta Poetica. Lotta Poetica ist natürlich eine Analogiebildung zu Lotta Continua. Es ist sozusagen der gesellschaftliche Kampf, der von den Dichtern und von der Dichtung geführt wird. Und das ist vielleicht wichtig, dass, wir, ähm, dass eben auch die Dichtung als in jenen Jahren, äh, 60er, 70er Jahre, dass auch die Dichtung als ähm, Teil dieser gesellschaftlichen Veränderung begriffen wurde. Many thanks for following us uh, through this tour, through the exhibition. We really hope you'll have a chance to also visit the exhibition in person in the future. Um, we will close this tour in an empty space that we've reserved for uh, new donations that we will uh, hopefully acquire throughout this exhibition. It's in a way like a metaphor for a new start, looking into the future, but also a message that um, building a sustainable future for a museum through collecting and collection research is of course an ongoing practice. <laughs>